Hey everybody, it's Daryl back again. <coughs> I'd rushed home from work, tried to get out here to do a video because it's still like 70 something degrees, but our light is fading extremely fast. If you can't tell by the sun. So, I'm not gonna have time to do a video because it's gonna get too dark and I'm not gonna be able to see anything, but I wanted to come out here and look at them. I've got one, two, three, four, five, maybe six hives over here at my house. And I don't know if you can see, I don't know if it's zoom on this thing or not, but let's see here. There's some green bins way back over there. Back over that direction. That's where my other hives are at. Uh, When I checked on them last time, I just pretty much went and to see what the uh, what the weight of them was. There goes two wood ducks flying high. They flying a little early today. There's a little pond back there in the edge of the woods. Probably flying from, but definitely got beads of flying on these two. Let's see if we can get any pollen coming in. Let me get out of the way. See all the bees in the air? When you're uh, messing with the bees, if you get in front of the hive, they'll actually pile up behind you because you're in their flight path. They're coming in. I don't see any pollen coming in with them. But this time of year here in the eastern part of North Carolina, the red maples are blooming. I'm not sure if we got any of them on that tree line right there or not, but anyway, I wanted to come out here and just do a quick little video, say hey to everybody. Uh, the weather here has been crap. We had that little polar vortex or whatever you want to call it come through, and uh, it cooled off. We're supposed to be in the 70s for the next two days, I think. We got 70 something today, and then. Uh, 70 Wednesday and Thursday and maybe Friday and then Saturday it's maybe like in the 40s uh, the winds probably blowing 13 miles an hour the next couple days so uh, if I do do some hive inspections there's no way in the world I can do videos on them with the wind blowing as bad as it is but I'll try and see what we can do this time of year uh, when you do your hive inspections the biggest thing you want to check for is honey stores. If they're low on uh, honey stores, you need to try to feed them if you can. I know there are certain parts in the United States right now, y'all got snow, so feeding them's not an option. Uh, you want to look for honey stores, we got skeeters out. Uh, you should have cat brood. There won't be a whole lot of cat brood, but you should have eggs and larvae. And of course, you want to check to see what the pollen is doing too. You can buy pollen, sub, pollen substitutes. You can also uh, make your own. I've never done that before. Uh, so I don't have any advice on the making your own pollen substitutes. But uh, the biggest thing right now that's going to affect our bees is 7 degree weather and then it drops down to 40. Uh, the bees will burn through honey stores pretty quick. But it's like that. But our saving grace is the red maples and the uh, dandelions. <coughs> uh, I've got a few dandelions out here in the yard. Not that many. Uh, when I redid my yard, when we got this other house, uh, I destroyed a lot of the dandelions. But they're slowly making a comeback. Right over here by the fence. You can't tell with the video, but... Uh, there's some dandelions and stuff over there. I got a phone call from some uh, friends of ours the other day and uh, her grandparents or her granddaddy used to keep bees and they actually went by there where the beehives used to be at and they were still there. Uh, the cows had got back there and had knocked the hives and stuff over but from the looks of it, there hadn't been any bees in there in a while. So uh, I was able to get 
I don't know, six or eight five frame nuke, heavy nuke boxes from back there and a couple uh, 10 frame mediums or uh, there were some mediums and some deeps. I'm probably gonna take those and make swarm traps out of them. Uh, they have severe wax moth damage. Uh, you know, the wax moths that eat through the wood or eat into the wood and all that good stuff. So I'm gonna make uh, swarm traps out of them. Uh, had a guy tell me, I think his name's James. He said the best swarm traps you can have is old hive bodies, 10 frame hive bodies. Put a solid top, solid bottom on them, and drill a hole in the side of the box, and don't even put no frames in it. Uh, I'm probably gonna do that, but I think I'm gonna put a frame or two in there of foundation. Uh, this brand new foundation. Normally, your wax moths won't destroy that. <clears throat> Normally, what the wax moths destroy is where your uh, your brood's been at in your beehives, at least. That's what I've seen. Uh, some of y'all might have other thoughts on that, but I've never had them destroyed, just straight up brood comb. I mean, uh, foundation, brand new foundation. Uh, I've never had them get into the honey supers. Now that I think about it. Hive beetles, yes, but not wax moths. And just straight foundation, there's no reason for the, the, the hive beetles to get in there either, so. I'm probably gonna do those, when I do those boxes, I'll take those frames and I'll actually put a screw on each side of them that wedge them in, that way when you're moving them and stuff, they don't fall out. Uh, so that's what we got going on here. One way you can check your hives. I don't know if I can do this with y'all there or not, but that hive's heavy. So they've got plenty of honey stores. I would check this one, but it's got two center blocks on it. So, if you can't check your hives because of the cool temperatures, that's one thing you can do is uh, grab a back hive and just pick up on it slightly and see what the weight of it is. You can kind of tell if it's a heavy hive, you know you got plenty of honey stores in there. But if it's light, then you might want to try to uh, go some other options. You can tap on the side of them with your ear to it and you can listen to see if your bees are still in there and alive. Uh, I'm pretty sure in your colder temperatures that'll work too. But if you've got your hive insulated, you probably won't be able to hear them. So, But if you're in the cooler temperatures and you can tap on the side of your hive and you can hear the bees, uh, one thing you can do is uh, on a semi-warm day, if they're out light, you can do the bee fondant thing. And, uh, put a spacer in and put some beef on it in there because if they're light and it's winter time uh, they're going to starve out anyway so a little bit of help I mean worst thing to happen they'll end up starving either way so what ended up going to be a short video has been eight minutes and 24 25 26 seconds so anyway hope you are doing good uh, Got some bad news, Minnie, my little uh, Chesapeake Bay Retriever, she got run over yesterday. So since Wyatt has died, we've been trying to get to have three dogs here. We got a blue healer and a black lab, and we had Minnie. She got run over, and then before that we had Levi, which was a little miniature Dotson, and he got into some kind of poison or something from somewhere. And he ended up dying. So since White's died, we've had two dogs die. So we kind of in a blah today and probably for the next little bit because when I got home yesterday from work, she was still alive. And I picked Waylon up. I said, we need to go in the house. And he said, come on, Minnie. Let's go inside. So that's a little heartbreaking. But she ended up dying just a few minutes after that. She just never made it to the vet. So... The Fisher family has had another loss. We were hoping 19 was gonna be a better year, but it's not starting out too good. So anyway, appreciate all y'all subscribers. If you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Give me a like, all that good stuff. Uh, I'm gonna try to get home early tomorrow and maybe do a video or two. 
Depends on how bad the wind is. But anyway, hope y'all doing good. We'll see you on the next one.